All right, so this lesson today is on ice charts. Now we're continuing with the equilibrium. Okay, we've talked a lot about ele <laughs> equilibrium. Equilibrium, and what that is, is when a system is at equilibrium, the forward reaction rate and the reverse reaction rate are the same. They're identical. So there is really no net change that we can see in the system, but there are reactants going to products and products going back to reactants at the same time. That's called dynamic equilibrium. We've done a lot of questions using the KEQ and the KEQ expression, and we've been able to determine either KEQ or concentrations of reactants or products when we're given all the data at equilibrium. The difference here in this section is that we are going to be given, most in most cases, reactants only. Okay, So you're going to be given initial react uh, initial concentrations of reactants that's the most common uh, case that we're going to get in some cases you'll be given uh, some reactants and products or even just products but the initial conditions will not be equilibrium conditions okay so you have to kind of get your head wrapped around this what's happening is I am going to tell you or the book is going to tell you hey here's your initial concentrations of your reactants this reaction is going to be allowed to go to equilibrium and you're going to be asked to find out what those concentrations are going to end up being at equilibrium. Now how do we do that? Well the KEQ is going to be given and remember we talked about when we talked about equilibrium the KEQ determines sort of when that equilibrium is reached, right? So I, I've got this little graphic here, this little some notes here from before. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, and I want to show you this. Okay, right here. Uh, again, we're going to be given A and B, which would be the reactants in most cases, initial concentrations. The question is going to say, allow these reactants to naturally sort of react together to produce products. At some point in this process equilibrium will be reached. That means that at some point C and D are going to turn into the reactants and react together to, for, to form these products A and B. You see? So here we've got the forward at equilibrium now we've got both going forward and back. So the question is at equilibrium what are our concentrations looking like? We know a little bit about the KEQ, right? The KEQ, if it's really large 200, 2,000, 80,000. What does that mean again? At equilibrium, what? Complete that sentence for me. Sorry? The products are favored at equilibrium. That's right. That means that there's generally going to be more moles of products at equilibrium than reactants if that number's high. If the number's super low, that means that as soon as A and B start reacting, C and D are going to react back and there's not going to be much C and D present at equilibrium. The equilibrium is going to be established pretty quick with mostly reactants favored. In this little graphic right here, a KEQ of 200, equilibrium will be established when there's more C and D. All right? Is everyone understanding that, right? Okay. So, again, before we've started at this stage right here, you've got the KEQ and you've got an equilibrium equation and you're, you're given maybe this concentration and this one and this one and you're asked to find this one so all this this is what we've done so far now we're starting here and we're going to be asked okay at equilibrium what are the concentrations going to end up to be and I'm going to show you how to do that there's a specific way you do that and it's called ice charts and I've been doing these since I was in high school so they haven't changed much they're tried and true pretty awesome and easy to work with, okay? So ICE charts, what does ICE stand for? ICE stands for, I is initial concentrations. And I mentioned it's going to be a chart, right? So I want you to, while you're kind of writing this down, draw a little chart, okay? And you're going to have three rows. First one's going to be I. And this row right here will correspond to initial concentrations of everything that's present initially. So let's say in the case with, where we have A and B producing C and D, the top part of the chart, that is the columns, are going to refer to 
the reactants and products like this, okay? So the columns are going to be the reactants and products in your equation, and I'm working with this A plus B produces C and D equation. You're going to want to put your coefficients there too, whatever they are. You're going to put your coefficients there. All right? So I, that is initial concentration. So first thing, make sure that your equation is balanced, okay? Balanced equation. And make sure that your values are in moles per liter, concentrations, not moles, okay, not just moles. You'll always be given, um, you know, moles and liters, or you'll be given molarity. And it is important to note that we, we can only do these charts involving the gases that are involved in the e equations, only gases, okay? And that'll, that'll maybe come up a little bit later, but... Okay, so that's the I. The second row is the C row, which stands for change. As you can understand, as things go to equilibrium, there's going to be some change. And most of the time, this change is going to involve a variable. Because, you know what? At, while we're doing this question, we don't know what that change is going to be. And that's really what we're trying to find. The KEQ is going to give us a hint as to what that change is going to be. Is it going to be just a little bit of change? Reactants are going to change just a little bit before equilibrium is produced or established? Or is this change going to be a big number? Is it going to change a lot before equilibrium is, is established? And so that's the, this is really important. And then finally, E, I'll make that blue, E is equilibrium. Okay, so initial change equilibrium. And in our chart, Okay, we're going to be able to work with this most of the time. We're going to have some kind of expression for what the reactants and products will be at equilibrium. It's going to be an expression involving this variable. Okay, so we're going to have to do some little bit higher level math, not just adding and subtracting. Uh, we may have to use a quadratic uh, equation, a quadratic formula. Uh, we'll go over that again for those of you that may be a little weak on that. But um, we will have to use algebra to solve for an unknown variable, which will be usually included in the change column. Okay. So that's the basic premise. I'll, we'll do some examples here now, and I'll show you kind of how this works, all right? So let's do an example right here. It's a, I'll leave that chart kind of up there a little bit. So it says one mole of H2, so this is not a concentration, it's just a mole, one mole of H2, and one mole of I2 are placed in a 0.5 liter container. Okay? And they are allowed to react at, and again, there'll always be a temperature in these questions because the KEQ, remember, is attached to a specific temperature. So when they give you a KEQ of 50, they have to give you a temperature at which that KEQ applies. So don't worry about the temperature. You don't have to include it in your calculations. It's just there for reference. So what are the concentrations of all substances at equilibrium? This is a typical question. We're going to be able to use an ice chart to organize ourselves and to set this up to be able to solve, okay? So this is how it goes. Now, again, the steps are, and I've, I've got the steps written out for you. I'll show you those a little bit later. But the steps are, we need a balanced chemical equation, okay? So that's our, that's our first step, really. We've got H2 and I2 are reacting so we know that that's going to be H2 plus I2, and they are going to react to, for, to, to form some kind of equilibrium. So at equilibrium here, what's going to be the product or products when H and I get together? You've seen this before lots. What's your guess? Uh, well, it's going to have something to do with H and something to do with I. So what's the properly written formula for hydrogen iodide? What is that going to be? Hydrogen forms a what ion? Plus. Are you guys just sleepy or forgetting this? Plus one, okay. Iodine forms a what ion? Minus one. So plus one, minus one. The properly written formula would just be HI. Okay? Remember that? So yes, you, you might have to complete some chemical equations here. Okay, we did that last year. Done that in chemistry for a while, science for a long time. So you might have to dust that off a bit. But anyway, so now what we need to do is have a, uh, it, we need to balance it. So we've got two H's and only one H here. So let's put a two there. We've got two I's and now we have two I's. So this is one, one, two. Okay? Now we can assume in this question, it's not really written out, but we can assume that all of this, all of these substances are gas, which is going to be important. 
We only include gases in our ice charts. All right, so that's step one. Equation, balance it. Okay, the next step would be to write everything that's given in concentrations. Very, very important. Ice charts have to have concentrations. So um, H2, let's see, that's one mole in a 0.5 liter container. So one mole per 0.5 liters, what's that? For a concentration, thank you. Two moles per liter, or two molar. And that's going to be for H2 and I2, you see that? What's the initial concentration of HI at the very, very beginning? Look at the question. What does it mention about HI here at the beginning? What does it say? One mole. It says one mole of H2, one mole of I2, placed in a container and allowed to react until they get to equilibrium. So how much HI do I have initially, according to this question? Zero. You have zero moles, actually. Yeah, you have one mole of H2 and one mole of I2, but you have nothing, you have no HI yet. Mm -hmm. So at the very beginning, again, I is initial. So that's gonna, we're going to be able to start our chart now, okay? So I, C, E. And this is going to be the H2 column, and I'll kind of just maybe cheat just a little bit here. I won't rewrite the substances. I'll just kind of use the equation above. But this is going to be the H2 column. This is going to be the I2, and so on. So initially, we have two molar. I'll get rid of this just so it doesn't be look confusing. Two molar and two molar. Everybody see that? And of course, this is molar always and we have zero of HI this is often going to be the case if it just lists the reactants and says they're allowed to react to equilibrium then you it's assumed that there are no products at the very 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 beginning right and again this is very very beginning initially everyone with me so far equation balance concentrations fill in whatever you can in the chart so far okay so this is where we are now Okay, this is very important. Okay, the change part is very, very important. Now, we don't know how much this two moles per liter is going to go down, but we know it's going to go down. Why do we know it's going to go down? Can anyone explain to me why I know that the two is going to go down? It's going to go down. Why? Because it's creating a product. Because it's creating a product. Exactly. And so the two reactants have to react to create the product. So those values are going to go down. They can't go up, right? They can't go up. They're not going up. They're only going to be able to go down. So we know that these are going to be a change is going to be a negative here and a negative here. Those are they're going to go down. Now, this one over here, HI, we know is going to go up. Okay, it's going to increase. And the signs, uh, negative, positive, the first big thing. Make sure you get your signs correct. Because it's going to totally mess you up later if you don't get that right. Okay, so we know that reactants are going to go down product is going to go up while equilibrium is being established. Now here's where you look at the balanced chemical equation for how much each is going to go down sort of with respect to the other substances in the equation. So um, it's relative, okay? So because this is a 1 and a 1 and a 2, uh, this is H2 is going to go down by one unknown part unknown amount. I2, because it's a one to one ratio, is also going to go down by one unknown amount. And if you understand how chemical equations work, this two over here means that for every one mole of I2, two moles of HI are produced. And for every one mole of H2, two moles of HI are produced. So what am I going to write right here? What's your guess? 2x, very good. Okay? Simple as that. Wait, so you just take the, the yeah, it's exactly right. You just use the coefficient because remember this is all relative, right? And so this change and, and x is going to be, you know, a, a, a change in concentration. In what concentration? In moles per liter. So we use the molar ratio. To, to state how much it's going to go down and up and down. Okay? So that's, that's the first big thing. If you know that, you're good. Now, at equilibrium, this is not too difficult either, because at equilibrium, we are going to have what we started with, and then we're going to include our change, and that's what's going to be at equilibrium. 
So at equilibrium here for H2, it's going to be 2 minus x. For I2, it's going to be 2 minus x. And for HI, it's going to be 0 plus 2x, or just 2x. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so the, the most useful thing here, obviously, is the expressions that are going to be representing all of the substances at equilibrium. Now, why is it important at equilibrium? Because I know how to write a KEQ expression. I know how the, where is it, 50. The KEQ is 50, right? And I know how that KEQ relates to all of the substances here at equilibrium, because KEQ is an equilibrium constant. So I'm going to use this and this and this to write my KEQ expression. So here we go. We know that KEQ is going to be this, the concentration of HI squared. Remember how we use those coefficients? All over the product of the concentration of uh, I2 times H2 and each to the power of 1. So you should remember how to do that. Hope the weekend hasn't totally erased your mind. And now what we're going to do is going to be able to fill in this value, this one, this one, and this one. And as you can tell, we'll be able to solve for x, which will be our change. So it's going to look like this. 50 is going to equal hi concentration. Let me put that back on the screen here. Is the 2x. So this is 2x squared. The i2 is 2 minus x, and so is the hi. Uh, sorry, the i2 and the h2. So this is going to be 2 minus x squared. See that? So now we solve for x. Sometimes you're going to get an equation that looks like this. And this is actually kind of nice when you have a squared on top and a squared underneath because you don't have to expand all this out and do a quadratic equation here. You can actually go ahead and take the square root of both sides, and this is going to be super easy. So this is going to show up a lot. Okay. So the square root of 50, right? Uh, roots 50 is going to be 7.071. And then the square root of this side over here is just basically going to get rid of these squares. So we're going to have 2x over 2 minus x. All right, so once you do all the math there, um, you isolate for x. And again, you want the principal square roots. You don't need negatives, just positives. So you get x equals 1.559. That's what you should get. And so what you have to do is go back to the chart. And you have to ask yourself, OK, how does this x that I just found algebraically, how does that factor into what I'm looking for in the question? Right? And you should notice that this is going to help give us the concentrations at equilibrium, because here's equilibrium, for H2, I2, and HI. Okay? And so that's what you do next. You simply go, all right, H2. The concentration of H2 is going to be 2 minus, this is now x, right? And that's going to be your new concentration at equilibrium. <coughs> the same for I2. <coughs> and then HI. equals 2 times 1.559. And so these are going to be your answers there. Okay, so those should be your <coughs> solutions for your equilibrium concentrations. Any questions about that first example? So quickly, here's the steps for these ice questions, like I mentioned, you want to make sure that all amounts that you're given in the question are in concentrations. That's very, very important. So moles divided by liters, do that for everything that's given.
A lot of times they'll be given to you in, in Malls per Liter already. Uh, it's not going to be there because it's kind of assumed, but you know, um, make sure you have a balanced chemical equation. Very, very important. Uh, the next step then would be to create a three-row ice chart like we did. So columns are going to be your reactants and products, and then the rows are going to be initial, change, and equilibrium expressions. Number four, write your KEQ equation, like just like we did on the previous page here. So here's the KEQ, right, the equation, and you're going to want to fill everything in. Fill in the equilibrium expressions in from the chart into the KEQ. <coughs> Solve for any variable that you, you know, in whatever appropriate method you have to do that. You might have to use a quadratic formula. You might have to take the square root of both sides like we did in that first example. And so on. So the, the first question that we did was pretty simple. So you might have two answers, right? Especially if you use a quadratic formula. You might have two possible answers. You have to test each solution for the reasonableness. For example, when you get two answers algebraically, one answer might actually be an x value that's greater than your initial concentration. Well, you can't have that either, right? So you, you will probably be rejecting one of those possible solutions when you do your math. And then finally, substitute the solution in for the variable in the equilibrium row and state the con concentrations as your final answer. So that's generally, most questions are going to be following this exactly because that's most questions are like that. For the odd question where you have something a little different, you can still use this chart. This chart's going to be very useful. But like I said in the note here, you may have to use the chart in a different way such as when equilibrium concentrations are given and you're asked to determine original concentrations of a substance. In this case, you might just have to work backwards. You can still work with the chart, but instead of that change maybe being negative, those changes will be positive and you have to kind of work backwards. So that's going to come up in, uh, in your assignment there as well. Okay? All right. So if you, um, yeah, if, if you need to... If you need to write more of this stuff down a little bit later, you can do that. Uh, or maybe I'll just pause right now.